You know, I've lived in Washington nearly my whole life, and I've only once been to the Nintendo office, and that was just going to see the building and not even going inside for the tour. I wonder if they still do tours. Oh well, that's a story for another time. Today, it's the story of the uncle who works for Nintendo. Nah, I still can't make that sound ominous. Hey, the amazing Rando! Watch Rando the Great construct sets with his very mind! What's up, rascals? Welcome to The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo. A story-driven horror game, I think? Either way, let's begin. No point in going on and on and on about what kind of game it is without knowing full well what it is. I don't know. You are 11 years old. What's your best friend's name? Yeah, why the hell not? Your best friend Brandon has invited you to a sleepover at his house this weekend. You've been friends since first grade, so asking your mom was Basically, only a formality. Okay. On Friday night, you're home for only a few hours. Long enough to pack, get in a fight with your younger sister, pack some more, and watch some TV. At six sharp, you're standing on the sidewalk outside Brandon's house while your mom idles in her car nearby. Mom is extremely punctual. Kind of impressive. She leans out the window to you. You behave yourself, okay? She says, as always. <sighs> Mom, what do you think I'm going to do? Set the family poodle on fire again? I already told you I'm not going to do that. The smell haunts me to this day. <sighs> I'll be at work, but if anything happens, you call me. <sighs> okay, Mom. I'll pick you up tomorrow at three, she says, as ye again, as usual. But then she pauses, looking up at the sky, which has been overcast throughout the day. If you play outside, she adds, be careful, it's probably going to rain. Bye. Bye, Mom. Af <laughs> After you part, your mom drives down the street, disappearing around the corner. You turn back to Brandon's house. The lights inside are glowing warmly. You can see Brandon waving at you from his bedroom on the second floor. Ooh, second floor. Aren't we fancy? I see why I'm friends with him. Oh. It's 6 p.m. Uh, yeah, we established that. Brandon's mom meets you just inside. Hello, she says. Dinner will be ready in just a few minutes, but you can drop stuff off in the den. It's not, you can drop your stuff off. Don't pick it apart. It's not a grammar lesson. <laughs> you and Brandon are camping out there tonight. Oh, are we? You just... Is this what we decided, or are you informing us thusly because we have no choice? Cool. You drop your sleeping men overnight bags in the corner of the den, and then pause to take a look around. Behind the couch, a grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a set of patio doors on the far side of the room, you can see the sky is just as gray as it was when you, your mom left. Framed pictures line the walls, and over the dark fireplace hangs a monstrous pair of antlers from a buck that Brandon's dad shot years ago. And of course, there's the big screen TV. Oh yes, the big screen TV. Sometimes it makes you uncomfortable how much nicer Brandon's house is than yours. Anyway... Yeah, we're just going to dismiss that little comment right there. Not not saying that Brandon's family is loaded compared to m me and my trailer park house. My double wide that I share with my sister and 
Why am I going into a hillbilly thing? You drop your sleeping... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you ready for dinner? Sure. Yeah. Dinner passes quickly. Tonight's meal is spaghetti and meatballs, one of Brandon's favorite meals. And his mother points out while piling a helping onto your plate. Brandon's father cracks a beer and jovially interrogates you about how much trouble you and Brandon are getting into at school. Dessert is heaping bowls of ice cream drizzled in chocolate sauce. You can't even finish yours. Holy shit. The grandfather clock in the den chimes. Whoa. That was loud. You go along now, says Brandon's mom, smiling from her side of the table. We'll clean up in here. Let's go get the TV ready, says Brandon. The two of you leave the dining room and head upstairs. Brandon's room is immense. You stay in the den because the TV is larger there. But there's a sizable one here, flush with the wall opposite of the full-size bed. We'll take the 64 down first, says Brandon, heading towards his TV, opening the entertainment center cabinet. It's his prerogative, of course. He gets to choose what you play first, usually. But as Brandon begins unhooking the cords of the N64 from the TV, you catch sight of other things he has in there. Other things? Do I want to know? All the major stuff. The old SNES, a PlayStation, a Dreamcast. Ooh! Ooh! I like Brandon a little bit more. Good thing we're friends. But some other things, too. Things you don't really recognize. A large black box with green highlights. A smaller purple one. A strange white and yellow tower with what looks like gloves resting on hooks on either side. A compact white cone. The hell? What are those? That's my question. Brendan looks to the clutter in the cabinet. Oh yeah, he says. They're pretty cool. I can't show them to you, though. They're still secret. I promised my uncle. Of course, you suddenly remember. His uncle. The uncle who works for Nintendo. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> In the corner of the grandfather clock is ticking softly through a near... Oh. Oh, I recognize that. Oh. Star Fox. I should play Star Fox. I'm getting sidetracked by the, vi the video game sounds in a game. <laughs> Ironic. Yes, I know, I put the emphasis on the wrong syllab. But, let's continue, shall we? In the corner of the grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a nearby set of patio doors, you can see it's getting quite dark. I thought it already was dark. I don't know. We never established what season this was. Whether six o'clock was when it got dark or whether it was just still daylight barely. I don't know! I'm just using my imagination and filling in the blanks and then it tells me something else. Brandon is parked in front of the large TV playing something on the N64. Talk to Brandon, watch. Should I talk to him? I might accidentally uh, screw him up because I know sometimes there are a few levels in Star Fox that I had to concentrate on and it was just frustrating. But that but maybe he's better gamer than I am, I don't know. Or I could watch him play, I could go to the bathroom, go to the... Or I could think about Brandon's uncle. Oh yes. Those sultry eyes, that big mustache that always smells of mustard. Ah, oh, I... just... What? Let's talk to Brandon. What would you like to talk about? Games! Let's talk about games. You bring up the subject of the new Pokemon games through some rumors that you read about on the internet. When you were supposed to be working on the computer lab at school, 
Brandon meticulously debunks or confirms everything you have to say, all based on, of course, what his uncle has told him. An hour passes. The clock chimes. You are in the den. We've been in the den, betch! Dare I? Uh, this is probably going to be regretful. It began with Mew. You didn't believe him at first. Then Brandon came to school one day and told you he had finally caught Mew. Prove it, you said. So he pulled out his Game Boy and showed you. There it was. Mew. The 151st Pokemon, available only to players at promotional events, somehow unlocked on Brandon's game. It's really strong, he said. It KOs every enemy in one hit. Brandon demonstrated this claim at recess when you and some friends linked Game Boys to do a battle. You were the first one down. No one else got in a single hit on Brandon's Mew. You asked how Brandon managed to get it. I would. I'd like to know. I've never caught Mew. I almost caught the glitch, though. Well, I... I saw it. Kind of fought it a little bit. And by fought it, I meant horribly struggled futilely to... to put a hit on it. And then fainted all my Pokemon, and uh, I never got the chance again. Oh, my uncle got a job at Nintendo, said Brandon. You were walking home together past one of the construction crews. Brandon still lived next door to you at the Brandon still lived next door to you at the time. Oh. He also got me this new Game Boy, said Brandon, pulling it out of his pocket. You hadn't noticed it earlier, but yes. Brandon now had a sleek new Game Boy color. Until today he had a one of the old ones. A big gray brick like yours. This one's a special edition, said Brandon. Isn't it cool? He's one of those little shits. You snap out of your reflections. Shall we go to the kitchen? I think we should go to the kitchen next. Cause... Something. Passing through the empty dining room, you enter the kitchen in which is also deserted right now. That'd be something I'd do. I I am about to raid this bitch's fridge. There's a few things here. Soda, cold pizza, milk, a water pitcher, purple stuff. Oh, Sunny D! Let's grab a soda. I could always go for a soda. You grab your snack and exit the kitchen. You head back to the den. The clock chimes. You're in the den. Brandon's mother bustles in into the room, holding a large ceramic bowl filled with popcorn under her arm. How are you kids doing? She asks. Good, says Brandon, his eyes not moving from the television. I hope you're having fun, says Brandon's mom. Here's some cop here's some popcorn. Extra butter. Mmm. She places it on the floor floor by Brandon. It's gonna get butter all over the controls. Thanks, lady. Almost immediately, Brandon is shoveling popcorn into your mouth. Yeah, see? He's gonna get butter all over the controller. Then he's gonna hand it to me and it's gonna be all sticky and slimy and gross and nasty and bleh. I don't wanna touch that. Meanwhile, his mother smiles first at him and then back at you. There's soda in the kitchen if you get thirsty, she says, and some pizza from the other night if you get hungry. Thank you. See, I say thank you because you should always be courteous. Courteous and and kind and and not a dick like I usually am. But shut up. <laughs> she looks at Brandon. Your father's gone to bed. I'll be there soon myself. I want you two to keep keep it quiet, all right? Yes, mom, Brandon says tiredly. Oh, and before I forget, she adds, your uncle called. He suddenly has some business here in town tomorrow, but he's driving in early. He'll be here around midnight. Ominous! For the first time, Brandon stops playing his game, stops eating popcorn, and turns to look at his mother. 
Okay, he says. I want you two to welcome him in. He'll be very tired and very hungry, so offer him something to eat before he goes to bed. Okay, Mom. Good night, kids. And with that, she's gone. Ah, and there we have a new thing as thunder rolls through the sky. I can hear it behind the Mario Kart and all that goodness. Ask about Uncle's visit. I'm a curious little whelp! So, why is your uncle coming? Brandon shrugs. Business? But I thought he worked for Nintendo. He does, says Brandon, frowning, but not looking frowning. Does that mean something bad happens when uncle from Nintendo comes to visit? I suppose that the whole premise of the game kind of answers that. But not looking away from the TV screen, he's really important there. Does Nintendo have a lot of business here? Why else would my uncle be coming? Brandon says, as if you've asked the dumbest question in the world. Well, it's cool I'll finally get to meet him. Yeah, agrees Ban Brandon. I think you'll like him. What sort of work does your uncle do at Nintendo? Brandon pauses the game and turns towards you, visibly agitated. How should I know? I don't work for them. Right now, he's not quite yelling, but you think if you keep pressing the subject, he might. Sorry, I was just curious. You drop the conversation in silent, in silence. So... By now, that soda's probably gone through me like, uh, and I'm gonna have to race like a piss horse. Yeah, I know what I said. You head to the bathroom down the hall from the den. There's a shower, a linen closet, and a toilet. Hooray! You go to the bathroom and wash your hands. Are you done here? Yeah. I think so. You head back to the den. Brandon takes charge the console again. Watch this, he says. On screen, Link is in the Temple of Time. Brandon heads to a corner of the map and, after walking back and forth a few seconds, phases through the wall. I found this the other day, says Brandon, running his avatar through a huge room with arched ceilings. What are you going to do with it, you ask? Brandon doesn't say anything, but smiles as Leek reaches the end of the room and stops in front of the shining golden light of the Triforce. No way! Link saunters forward and grabs the Triforce. Triumphant music and lengthy cutscene play as Link poses with the Master Sword, which now glows gold. Now the game gets really cool, says Brandon. You have unlimited bombs and arrows and can go into the past as an adult. Accordingly, he shows things off for a while. The clock chimes. Whoa. You're in the den. Yes, yes we are. It begins raining outside. Return! The bowl of popcorn? You grab a handful of popcorn. It's buttery and delicious. Mmm, mmm. You walk around the perimeter of the den, inspecting the pictures idly. Most of them are family portraits from years past. Brandon cradled lovingly between his mother and father, or any one of the three on their own. A happy, tidy family. Look for pictures of Brandon's uncle. You don't find any. Not one. The only pictures here are of Brandon and his parents. You don't know why make, that makes you feel uneasy. Time passes. Brandon invites you over to play a game of Mario Kart. Brandon wins every round pretty easily, and you start to feel like this is, was a mistake. He's just too competitive and, frankly, a lot better than you. Good game, he says, smirking. Good game. Ready to try again? Brandon asks. Let's switch it up, you say. You've been playing for a while. Uh. What time is it? It's 11. All right. Let's hurry this along. Uh, cool. 
You begin topping, talking about mutual acquaintances you, who've moved away, but Brandon quickly changes the topic. An hour passes. There we go. The grandfather clock chimes the hour as Brandon suddenly looks up from the N64. It's time, he says. Is your uncle here? Jeebus! Someone knocks at the front door. Like a fucking maniac! That's him, says Brandon, standing up. I should go let him in. As he leaves the den, you realize you could follow, but a part of you really feels like being scarce for a bit. Ooh, should we follow or hide? Let's follow. Let's be brave and adventurous. The knocking continues persistently as you follow Brandon to the front of the house. Outside the pebbled glass of the front window, you can see a tall, dark shadow. Brandon goes to the door, undoes the deadbolt, cracks it open. You can come in, he says to whoever stands out there in the po on the porch, looks over his shoulder at you. Sorry, he says. Before you can ask what there is to be sorry about, the door slams open. Bad expression. Hello, child. Come closer, child. No more worries, child. I am hungry, child. No more worries. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> what is this? Unidentified. Undefined error. I have no idea what just happened. But I have a feeling that the uncle is a demon creature who just ate my soul. Well, guys, as strange and out of place as this video was, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by giving that like button a bop, leave some comments down below, and if you're new to my channel, check out some of the other videos that I've done. I swear they're better. And I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully, it'll amaze.